and so the first thing or the first realm prayer brings you into when you start doing kingdom business is when you become a legislator the reason the heritage of God is available to our generation is because there are certain men through prayer that insist to keep it I used to think when you study the Bible and you get some revelation some things will start happening until when I started working with God God began to point to some people and told me to honor them I now realize certain things happen on earth because some individuals are present and so I told myself I will have to grow to become like one of them before I leave this world Paul was speaking to a church and he said when I depart he said grievous wolves shall come and they shall plunder you and take some of you as their disciples now the Holy Ghost was there how come these wolves could not come while Paul was there that means Paul was not a church member Paul was something other than a church member he was a custodian the Bible speaking in Colossians 4 12 he said Epaphras is one of you but hear this he's a born servant of Christ he said laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God now this Epaphras was not in Colos he was somewhere with Paul but it was his prayer that made the believers in Colos to be accurate that means if Epaphras stopped praying even their doctrine will become wrong so the reason the pastors can read scripture and preach accurate doctrine is because the guy safeguarded the portal of light through his altar and so when Epaphras is gone even the doctrine will be affected Jesus Paul was going to Damascus in Acts chapter 9 to plunder the church and Jesus appears to Paul and I thought when a man meets Jesus he has come to the zenith of encounters and Jesus told him go into the city you'll be told what to do and when Paul entered the city a man showed up and told him brother Saul the Jesus that appeared to you on the way sent me how can a man meet Jesus and Jesus send him to a man because men are not the same these ones have journeyed so much so that even if you go to heaven they will send you back to earth and say that thing you look for to heaven is on earth there's a custodian carrying it those are legislators in the spirit and so when we are teaching about prayer it's beyond receiving bread and wine when we are teaching about prayer it's a journey into realms in God it's a place of stature and rank because when you leave this world the things you prayed about and received may not be relevant again it is who you become by prayer that will matter Paul said I have fought a good fight I have kept the faith there remained for me a crown how did he know that they give crowns because when Paul was walking on the earth he was journeying with the Spirit of God and so prayer is beyond asking and receiving prayer is actually a syllabus in the spirit that brings you to realms of maturity and dominion with God and the first realm you will enter is the realm of a legislator a legislator is, is a man that proclaim laws so when that man speaks his words become laws and so what God wants to do is to corrode the earth realm with us so with the things we utter they are not just words born out of intelligent speaking they become laws in the spirit so a man can grow so much in prayer and he will stand up and say no church will be bombed again he doesn't need to go to say it on a radio station because he said it it becomes a law in the spirit if you attempt to bomb churches angels will just appear and strike you you won't know why a man can rise up and make a statement and that statement will be valid for 50 years it will be like a law among men such are the realms prayers bring us into because when a man begins to pray he becomes a legislator and there are three cadres of legislation number one is the realm of a watcher a watchman a watchman is one who stands high in the spirit so when a watchman is praying what he gains in prayer is ascension he stands high in the spirit and he looks ahead to safeguard the church from danger I'm showing you places we get to in prayer because the reason some persons are tired of praying is simply because they exhaust their prayer points too early and so when they are coming to pray it's like coming to shop so they bring a lot of prayer points and when they finish shopping those prayer points prayer finishes but when you find a man who has understood prayer when he's praying even the prayer points are a distraction and the thing is when you go there those things others pray for you don't need to pray they will leave you naturally you know when a man is running on earth he will need to dodge obstacles 
But when you fly, even the mountains become small. When you take off on the plane, you don't need to dodge the mountain. The mountain will not be there anymore. And so when you teach people how to grow in prayer, you are also teaching them how to receive answers. But this kind of answer doesn't come to them. They become the answer. Because they've ascended to where God himself is. And so the first realm you get to as a legislator is the realm of a watchman. If the body of Christ don't have watchmen, we will become endangered species. Because it's the watchman that tells us where the enemy is coming from. It's the watchman that tells us the strategies of the enemy. The job of the watchman is not necessarily to fight, it's to see. Because when he ascends, he can look into the cocoons of darkness and tell you the plans they have. Even he will not know. He's just, he just has an advantage called height. And so there is a realm in prayer you get to, you become a legislator. And the reason you are a legislator is because of the things you can see. When you see from that realm, you become an alarm system for the body of Christ. Let me read two scriptures. When I look at time, I shut down. <laughs> Songs of Solomon. Or let me begin with Isaiah 59 verse 16 so you understand what I'm saying in, 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 in context. This is God speaking. He said, and he saw that there was no man. And he wondered that there was no intercessor. What do you mean? That means if there is no man who can advance God's government on earth, the multitude is useless. Because all of them can be a pre. Because no intercessor was found, all the men were not men anymore. Hope you know, Luke 18, 1 say, men ought always to pray and not to faint. So if a man is not praying and they check from heaven, he's not a man. One of the ways they define men in the spirit is that incense arise and ascend from them. And so when God looked at the earth and he didn't find anybody praying, he said there was no man. So every other person breathing can be like animals. And that's why you find when people don't pray, they become cheap priests in life. The devil can show up and kick them. The devil can create a pattern and a cycle in that family. Every two years he comes and picks somebody like a hawk. They just become like animals. That the devil can damage their destiny anytime he wants. Because if you are not praying, you cease to be a man. He said he looked on the earth, there was no man. And he wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought him his salvation. So it is the presence of intercessors that makes for the agenda of God to be fulfilled. When there are no men praying on earth, the agenda of God will be truncated, no matter how powerful God is. Because the earth he has given to the sons of men. And so these intercessors who are legislators are divided into, into ranks and cadres. And the first is the watchman. The job of the watchman is to see ahead. In the ancient times when kingdoms are built, they have sentry officers that stand on top of the fence. Their job is to watch day and night. If a messenger is coming, they discern and they can tell that this is a messenger. If it's an attack, they now warn those at the gate that something is coming so they can brace up and prepare for attack. If those guys sleep, the whole territory is in danger. And so the first operation of the legislator is to become a watcher. How come things happen to the church and we are taking on our words? It means there are many pastors but there are few watchers. Because when the watchers are no more, our numbers count for nothing. It is the watchers that give us the strategic advantage we need because they see ahead before the enemy invades. And if we can no longer see, then we become victims and we become vulnerable. Isaiah 56, verse 9 to 10. Here is what the Bible says. See how the devil works. I wish I had time to show you the dynamics of kingdom. So you know that that thing that happened in your family didn't happen. It was orchestrated. If you had eyes, you would have seen that they planned it for, for two years. You said something just happened because you are on earth. In the spirit, they planned it. They knew the hour and the second it was going to happen. They ordered and orchestrated all of that motion for it to happen. Nothing happens on earth. Everything on earth is orchestrated. Because the real realm where the game is played is in the spirit. And so when we become watchers, we see there. And if we don't see there, our gates become porous. He said, all ye beasts of the field, he said, come to devour. Yea, all ye beasts in the forest. Now, this was a cry in the demonic realm. The territory has become porous. All of you who are beasts, come. There is free, there are free priests here to devour. Because of what? Look at what verse 10 said. You are seeing why families become porous? 
ministries become porous, nations become porous. He said, his watchmen are blind. They are ignorant. They are dumb dogs. They cannot back, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. And so every time the ministry of the watchman is withdrawn, everybody becomes a victim. They don't just, they don't even need the devil to plan. They cry and call them to come because the defenses have become porous. And so when legislators rise, who can tell the devil, stand back? It's because somebody is watching and they can decipher their agenda, plan ahead of time and give the body of Christ a strategic advantage. When men begin to pray, their eyes are open and their eyes are flooded with light. It is that light that becomes the advantage. When we, are in, we say we are invincible, we are not just quoting scriptures. When we say we are invincible, there is a protocol in the spirit that we obey. And that protocol is the protocol of the watchman. If you don't see ahead, you will be a victim. That's how the kingdom operates. Now, when you finish with the watchman, then you have the gatekeepers. The gatekeepers are the intercessors that fight. Not every intercessor fights. There are some intercessors that see. And when they see, they warn. There are other intercessors that fight. If you have prayed or you have prayed with people, you will notice that if you start praying for long, a point comes where somebody just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, his eyes open. He prays with you for five minutes. He's writing. He's looking for his book. He starts writing notes. And you are wondering, why am I not hearing or writing anything? Your job is not to see. Your job is to build stamina. Because a, watch, a, a watchman sees a gatekeeper fights. And so what a gatekeeper builds in prayer is stamina. Because he's the one who defends the gate and insists that nobody will cross and, 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 and destroy the defenses. And so when we begin to pray and grow in prayer, you will find either one of these three things. Either your eyes are illuminated and you begin to see and you can decipher what the devil is doing and give the body of Christ a strategic advantage through information and revelation or you build so much stamina. People pray for four hours. They say, let's go and rest. You say, what do you mean rest? This is where we rest. The rest that the weary has is when they pray because it's with the stammering tongues that God brings them rest. That kind of grace is the grace of the gatekeeper. He builds stamina when he prays. He says, you dearly beloved, building up yourself upon your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And so when a man begins to pray beyond needs, one of the things that happen to him is he is, he is gathered and infused with the strength of God. In Isaiah 40 verse 28 to 31, he says, have you not heard? Has it not been said to you that the everlasting God fainted not? The idea is about fainting. He said, neither is he weary. He said, he giveth power to the faint and unto them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Those are watchers. Those are gatekeepers. He said, even the youth shall faint. That means this business is not a business you prosecute because you are healthy. Somebody can have to back losses and pray more than you. And somebody can be 90 years old and pray more than a young man of 22. It's not about physical strength. This is about a grace you tap into. He said, he giveth power to the faint. Unto them that have no might, he increases strength. And he said, in case you think it's natural, even the youth shall faint. He said, the young men shall utterly fall. He said, but they that wait upon the Lord, he renews their strength. He said, they mount up with wings. This teaching of prayer now is not God, give me breakthrough. This teaching of prayer now is equipping for battle. He giveth power to the faint. Unto them that have no might, he increases strength. And he said, when they run, they are not weary. When they walk, they don't faint because they've mounted up with wings. There are a group of legislators that God raises to defend the gate. And so, you think, do you think we are at peace because of government? Do you think we are at peace because of the army? Since the banditry operations began, there are some men who have not stopped fasting. You are sleeping and you say, Lord, we thank you for what you are doing. That thanksgiving you are giving is because somebody has been fasting for four years. Since they heard about banditry, they lost their sleep. They've been praying and interceding. Lord, restore. It is the prayer of such that has kept the gate closed. If those guys stop, the church will be overrun. And so every time God wants to leave a witness in a generation, he will raise those who are gatekeepers. They defend the gate and they stop invasion into the church. Now, one of such people 
is more important to God than 1,000 Christians. 1,000 Christians can gather and ask God for bread. But God can overlook them for that one man. Because if that one man goes down, the heritage of a generation will be at stake. And so when we come to a conference of prayer, thank God for the answers he gives. And he will give many tonight. But over and above that answer, every one of us must insist, I will never remain the same. Father, if there are men you depend on to carry out your agenda in Africa, I must become one of such men. If there are men you depend on for your voice to be heard, I must become one of such men. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the breakthrough. But over and above the breakthrough, who are the men fighting the battles of God? That's when prayer eternally becomes profitable. And I can tell you, very few people have grown in prayer to that point where God can commit such hallowed responsibilities to. In this conference, men will rise that we pray to defend the gates. Second Kings 22 verse 4. See the gatekeepers. He said, go up to Hekiah, the high priest, that he may sum up the silver which is brought into the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the door have gathered of the people. Their job is to decide what enters the gates and what are kept and what are forbidden from entering the gates. And so when you find infiltration, it means the rank of the gatekeepers are depleted. When you find corruption, it means the rank of the gatekeepers are depleted because it is the responsibility of the gatekeepers to fight out corruption. And so when the ministry of prayer is at work, things can be changed through prayer, but over and above that, strange men begin to emerge. And you will find some of them you will look at them, they have the strength of a bear. They can be at the altar for seven days stretch and they are praying. And you ask yourself, is this a human being? No, he's not a human being. He's a battle axe. He's a weapon of war. He's being carved in the fires of prayer. And so the things God wants to achieve, it is through such men that those things can be achieved. They are called gatekeepers. And the third category of legislators are the intercessors. The job of the intercessor is to negotiate from the throne room and bring verdict in favor of the righteous. So the intercessor is the one that has utterance. The intercessor is the one who knows what to say and he understands the protocol of the presence. You know, when you look at the body of Christ today, you will know that we are doing business in shallow waters. You will know that the business is in shallow waters. That's why even when the presence of God is heavy, people can be ch chatting not because it's part of media trying to transmit the message he's trying to give to tell somebody i they come i they come service remain five minutes and if service doesn't close on time he will carry his bag and said i've had enough he's going home in the days of paul they preached into the middle of the night somebody fell down uticus and died paul came down carried him up fell upon him he didn't wake up it was in the morning he woke up but they continued the service notwithstanding In the days of Paul, the Bible said, no man dared join themselves with these people. Because those were the days when, if you lie to the Holy Ghost, you'll fall down and die. Because what they were building was the foundation of the church. Error could not be allowed. Because any error that enters that foundation will affect the church till date. And so the, the vetting system was rigid. That's why kingdoms, kings, nations, all kinds of army could not shut them down. A point came they looked at two men and said this be the men that turn their world upside down what is the power they have when such men walk to you and say god said just know it's god talking it's not out of impulse because they know the realm i know a man many years ago whether he was in the body or in the spirit i can't tell he said but this man was carried to the third heaven because god carries them to the tabernacles of zion when they come down and tell you God said, by March, Boko Haram will end. If you like, doubt it, it must happen. What they are saying is not out of permutation of human intelligence. They are telling you the breaking news from the courts of heaven. They participate there. And so such men, when they pray, they journey. They journey because they need to hear the conclusions of the verdicts of heaven. When such a man walks into church, he actually never left the church. Because everywhere he goes to, he carries the atmosphere of heaven. 
that man can be around you you are talking he has been quickened and the next time he talks he tells you this is what the elders are saying this is what the angels are saying this is what is happening how come christianity has become a social gathering because we've not explored prayer we do thanksgiving praise and worship these are beautiful but when you want to grow in the spirit and journey through the gate of the soul into the chambers of the spirit there is a place you labor is the place of prayer and when we genuinely begin to pray there are those who we see ahead and want the church when we begin to pray there are those who will have stamina like the angels of heaven to defend the integrity of god and when we begin to pray there will be those who can tell you what the father is saying now that is when the church will find comfort and consolation because the things altered they have the weight and the signature of the mortars heaven and earth can pass away those things will not fail their wars have become like the scripture itself did you not read about paul he said concerning virgins i have no commandment from the lord he said but i speak as one who is trustworthy how can a man talk and his words will be equal to scripture where is he talking from where is he talking from what does he know it was the same paul that said i have the mind of christ he says so you can judge all things because the guy has been in the courtroom for too long and so even when god is not talking he knows what god will say he has been there for a very long time on any subject if the one god says he will tell you the one god does not say he will still tell you and if god speaks is the same thing god will tell you because he lives there he lives there that is where his solace is drawn from so when somebody like paul is praying he's entering court sessions in the spirit and he wants to bring you verdict and so when there is contradiction you can walk into the church and find out where are the legislators and they will tell you don't worry about what the governor is saying he said by this time tomorrow this thing will change but you see when such men are no longer in the church we will depend on human connection to survive because if you cannot hear from the court of the spirit you must have to hear from the court in the natural by all means verdict must come from somewhere but the advantage of the believer is not in the world system it's in the spirit we are supposed to dictate for the world system from our throne and our throne is not a chair it's an altar this is where true christianity begins from because the idea of salvation was to restore you back to kingdom salvation would not have been necessary if adam didn't fall and so we are not supposed to stop at salvation we are supposed to journey from salvation into kingdom and if we were doing kingdom this is where the business would have been where men participate with god to establish his dominion when jesus was walking upon the face of the earth he never had need to pray for cancer he never had need to pray for food because jesus never fell he was walking as a son and as a son he was bringing verdicts to the face of the earth that's why when he prayed the first thing he said was thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven how can you say thy kingdom come uh, thy will be done on earth if you don't know what is in heaven and in that same verse the bible said the son of man which is in heaven john 3 13 why he was walking in nazareth you are the one who think he's in nazareth why he's talking from here his sight is from the spirit because he's as tall as the clouds of the heavens he can pick the heart of the father any day any time and so the words he speak he said they are spirit they are life when i talk i am echoing what the courts of heaven have concluded and so a generation must rise that must function in the order of the patriarchs who don't speak just because they are educated they speak because they are informed they don't speak because they are wise they speak because they have seen they don't speak because they participate with humans they speak because immortals whisper to their ears and until such men rise our christianity may be trapped in the natural realm and so we'll appear intelligent until spirits come and one demon can disenfranchise a thousand christians and you are wondering somebody is crying what happened he said he's confused another person is crying what happened he said there's death in the family another person is crying say what happened he said they don't know what is going on and everybody is living from the realm of uncertainty we are those who know what is happening in the spirit the potential is there but it will take prayer to activate it and unfortunately not many are praying prayer is beyond asking god for things your true destiny lies on the altar and so when you begin to pray you begin to go to where your original destiny was designed because there are most of us here that god depends on for earth to be accurate because captured in our dna is the grace to be a watcher 
and until we ascend our throne, which is the altar, we cannot see the things that are eternal. Most of us, our strength is on the altar and until we begin to pray, the stamina required to deliver on our destiny, we will not find it. And most of us, our strength is on the altar because we are supposed to be custodians of the oracles of God. But we have captured all the oracles of Harvard University, all the oracles of, 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 of Oxford, and we brag with mundane knowledge, knowledge that is falling. Those knowledge are important because you are participating in the earth realm and there's nothing wrong with it. But what if you are summoned to where your true originality dwells? What will you say? I told myself I will never speak chemistry alone. There's a language that is superior to chemistry. Because the more I read it, the more mundane I saw it. The more I read it, the more, the more, the more falling I saw it. And I know a language that is spirit and life. That is the one that can communicate the weight of your destiny. And so every other thing you are doing becomes a platform for manifesting destiny. The first thing prayer makes out of you is to become a legislator. So that you too can govern over the agenda and the program of God.